Here we are for the start, the 2023 Warden Law Car Club season. It's a new championship, as I'm sure you know. There's five classes racing here today, and there's quite a turnout. Um, we're quite lucky here because over the last week, a lot of the country has been hit by quite bad weather. And even though we're in one of the colder parts of England, it's actually been quite warm today. And the snow's long gone. Not that we had very much. So the way the day is going to work is there's practice, qualifying, two heats, a pre-final and a grand final for all five classes. So there's going to be plenty of exciting racing and certainly, certainly some exciting things to watch. And we'll catch up with the winners at the end of the day. It is a busy time of year in all forms of motor racing. Exciting too, as nobody knows quite what the season ahead will hold. In the case of this new series, which is at the forefront of the future of Carton, as the very first venue to work with Motorsport UK on their new clubman's licence, it is a time where the points tables are empty. By the end of the day, the first winners will take their places at the top of their respective championship tables. But as we all know, in Carton, more than other forms of motor racing, with the fast and furious nature of competition heading to the finals, it does not always indicate ultimate pace. One moment can make or break the result for a driver, more than other forms of motor racing, but we are going to get our first taste of how the different categories are going to go. The feeling in the air at Warden Law at the start of this new era is one of strong positivity. It might be a new adventure, but the circuit has revelled in competitive carton over the last few years. Operationally, it was just business as usual, the best way to be. Everybody had a job to do, and in that sense it was just another race to you, but you couldn't hide the fact that there was a bit of walking on air going on. There was a spring in the step of everyone involved in running the show. Sure, the venue has hosted the highest levels of British Carton over the last couple of seasons, but this time it was something a bit more. This one was theirs. The Bambino class christened the tarmac with their carts taken to the track for the first race day practice of the new series. Although it was bright with clouds slowly sitting overhead, rain from overnight left the track greasy. And, as was the case with all five championships, the early running was way off the pace of later in the day. In fact, there was a 20 second difference between the fastest time in FP1 and the pole position time from qualifying. Sebastian Crawford set the pace in the running leading up to the races. And there was another Sebastian, this time McCarthy, who took control with two heat wins and topping the pre-final to grab Paul for the final itself. Although Freddie Blackshaw got the jump slightly from the stand and start, it was McCarthy who took the lead in the turn one. The youngster would not be headed and immediately pulled away behind the leader. A kerfuffle in the mid-pack saw Jamie Walsh finish the first lap in third with Crawford chasing him down. Phoebe Rogers was in fifth after being hit on the outside at centre one by Abel Hutton, who recovered from the resultant spin and was able to make a more successful move for the same place on the next lap but this time on the inside. McCarthy was relentless in his lap and at the head of the field, building a solid gap over Blackshaw. It's the first Warden Law Car Club final of the year for the Bambino class. Sebastian McCarthy took a dominant victory from Freddie Blackshaw. Sebastian Crawford in third place. Up now is the Micromax final. Logan Roll from Paul, Alex Goodson in second. As with the Bambino class, the track picked up speed from the Micromax runners. From practice one to qualifying, the times tumbled from 1 minute 13 seconds to 1 minute 1 second. Drew Davidson grabbed that position, but an urge on the first lap of heat one saw him drop down the order and Alex Goodson take the first flag. In the second heat, Logan Rolf headed the field, which he repeated in the pre-final, to claim pole for the last race of the Micromax schedule. A bit of a 
mid grid kerfuffle into turn one and early on the leaders had a bit of clash into the chicane which left Lewis Cacaldi in the lead where he was able to pull up quite a gap from Logan Rolf um, up about four seconds but Rolf wound in the last couple of laps to be two seconds down at the close with George Swire coming home third And now the end of tax final with Daniel Mindo on pole position. The end of tax minimax section, it could be said that their knowledge is power. Warden lost all war, Daniel Minto had his name dominating the timesheets and results all day, with the exception of the second free practice where the Hunter Motorsport Racer did not set the time. It was the case still in the heats and pre-final where crossing the line first was his order of the day. Jack Collinson followed Minto home in the three contests with Oliver White and Charlie Benson rounding out in the heats, with Benson and White adding third in the pre-final. Well that final was quite something. Daniel Minto led from the start from Jack Collinson and behind was a, a race long battle between Oliver White and Charlie Benson and it was tight and it was having a look every corner. Real racing. Time for the Junior Rotax final now. But that leading the pack all year result from the Inter Rotax class was not reflected in Junior Rotax. The biggest entry of the weekend was in Junior Rotax and there was no standout figure. There was a pack at the front of the field but no individual was able to stake an early claim to the category. It was a mixed morning with Joe Arnold and Ben Horner topping the times in practice and qualifying but the races, the victories, that was surrounding Jay Smith and Ethan Head. The first heat went to Wave Smith with Head answering back in the second. Smith took the pre-final and pole position for the final face-off. The pace was metronomic at the front of the field and at the front every lap was kept under 52 seconds but the main battle was for third and fourth with a couple of position swaps. Well, that junior road tax final was something. Ethan Head stamped his authority on the race right from the start. It was a strong battle for second, third and fourth between Jay Smith, Jack Hobson and Kasper Tomolowski with Smith coming out in second after a fantastic move. But he and Hobson, oh, there was some fantastic overtakes there. Senior Rotax and there appears to be a few little bits of rain in the air. The fastest carts were naturally the headline act, even though the grid didn't match the size of the junior category. 2020 Senior Rotax champ Morgan Porter was on hand to race with Hunter Motorsport. He was on point for most of the day. Max Kettle took the fastest time in one practice session but everything else was grabbed by Porter. It might have looked like a walkover at points, but it was not. Scottish racer Angus Scrivener kept close enough to take second place in each of the pre-final and the final, and he made sure that the leader didn't have a chance to back off, even as a light shower arrived at the beginning of the final. Had Porter allowed a break in concentration, he would have been caught. But as you'd expect from a racer with success already in this category, he hammered it home. Thomas Wood took third in the last two races of the day, with Max Kettle following home in fourth. So there we are, Morgan Porter takes the senior class in the final race of the day, and I can say it's been quite successful start of the Warden Low Car Championship for 2023. I can't wait for the next round. 
After the prizes were handed out, I took the opportunity to catch up with Morgan Porter to talk about how his season had started. Uh, today went well. Uh, the whole weekend was enjoyable. Um, I was supposed to be racing elsewhere, but last minute decision, luckily, being with Reese, managed to sort it out. And uh, yeah, came for, came for a nice weekend. And uh, yeah, no, it was a good bit of testing for me, which was really, really important. I enjoy being at the track as well, yeah. especially with the team being so local. It's, everything's nice and easy just to work around. Uh, yeah, we've got a solid bit of a nice engine testing in for next week in the O plate. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy. Now, part of the storyline that's building up across the season here is obviously the two local teams, ST and Hunter Motorsport. Mm. Now, you've been a rival to Hunter before. How did it come about that you've become part of the team? <laughs> so, it's just through pure, pure like, sort of friendship, I would say. Um, after stop racing Rotax, I sort of you become friends with the people that you're almost enemies against. So now I became sort of good friends with Reese, uh, chatting away, and then uh, yeah, it just sort of like happened in a very short space of time. It went from being a, almost like a jokey joke, oh, are we are you going to race for me like this? To very seriously, yeah, no, let's do it, let's go for it. Um, sort of being out of road tax for a little while. Uh, I did the I won the British Championship in 2020, and then literally sort of stepped away from Rotax. Yeah. Um, so I, this is my sort of first proper time back at it, and hopefully we'll have a good strong season. So, uh, so my personal thing for racing is I just this is me. Um, I think I was fairly realistic with the whole sort of budget side of things. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to do the best I can within karting. Um, so now that. Luckily means that I'm able to keep racing for a little while longer, um, thanks to the help of Reese, obviously. But I do my KZ campaign as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the, for me, karting's my life, everything. So I get to race, which is a bonus, but then I also do the work alongside of it, which is easy, easy lifestyle. So, there we have it. One round done, and now we begin the journey through November, where the inaugural Wardenlaw Car Club Champions will be crowned.